Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Swissman15 and we're back with another Factions in Depth. This time it is the Moors, where we will talk about everything and anything about the Moors and how to use them in online battles, both Siege and Pitch, but mostly Pitch of course. And here for this lovely faction we have a good friend of mine, the Mighty Zaz. What's up YouTube? What's up Medieval 2? How are you guys doing? And um, yes, he, he's very, 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 very nervous. He was like shaking out his boots before, he can't even handle being with me. I mean, I'm so popular, of course. <laughs> so it is claimed. I'll do my best. Right, that was a complete sarcasm. I'm not very popular. All right, so here we got the Moors, and um, it's just going to be great. So let's just go straight into it, of course. As always, we'll start with the Cav. So Christian Guard, probably this, the best unit that the Moors have to offer. What do you have to say about them, Mighty Zaz? Well, the, the Christian Guard, they're basically the equivalent of the Spanish uh, Conquistadors or the Sicilian Norman Knights. They're a very, very fast, hard-hitting cav. They have decent stats, very good stats, actually identical to any other European cavs you'll give, but what they do have is maneuverability. But, however, their upgrades are rather expensive. Their overall cost is rather expensive compared to what you would get from Norman Knights or Conquistadors, but they are the very best ab uh, they are the best option you will have in fighting any other European cab you have so yeah um, of course they can't get any armor upgrades unfortunately um, no they can't which makes them very difficult to use um, uh, well not difficult to use but difficult in a melee of course what they do have is they have the eight charge which the conquistadors and Normanites don't have of course they do cost more and they do have one last defense but they're really fast and that's uh, probably their greatest asset. That That is their greatest asset, and that's really the only thing you have to counter the European calf, like Teutonic Knights or even Chivalric or Hospitallers. You know, it's going to be that speed, that's going to be that maneuverability that's that's going to win you the calf battles. But there's definitely a lot more options for you to help you later with that fight, but you dictate. And then there's also the fact that uh, they cost 970 and then over 1,000 with just an attack upgrade. So they're very costly, so that's why there's always the Grenadine Lancer to help uh, fill up your cavalry lines if you're running low or fighting on a budget. I absolutely. Like, the issue with, I find, with all the Muslim factions is that there there's always a slight, slightly bigger cost at, you know, like buying units. They're, they're, you're always going to be paying a lot more than what you might like be able to do with like say a hospital or whatever. The Christian Guard 970, that's expensive. The Grandine Lancers, even at their price, I consider them slightly expensive but it's the best what you got used with and with the Grandine Lancers you have Christian Guard 970, you have the Lancers at 750 and with attack and upgrades, they will still be a little bit less than your average Christian Guard but they will still be as fast moving and they'll still be as hard hitting as able as Christian Guard. It's just a matter of like morale and stuff like that. Yeah, it's very important to keep in mind with Christian Guard and Grenadine Lancers, you don't want to fight in a melee long. You want to be more of flanking. Use them as getting off quick charges, go off, attack the infantry. Don't prolong the melee. Just distract his cab and try to maneuver with them. If you stay in a melee, you're probably going to lose, especially against something like Teutonic Knights. Absolutely. No Mamelukes, Royal Mamelukes, you will be decimated. Like, even like a Norse uh, war clerics, you will be like pounded to the ground. You need to get in and get out as quick as you can, get that charge off. That's generally what the best strategy is for Cav in general. But with the Christian Guard and like with, with, with Muslim cavalry in general, you want to get in, get out, and charge as quick as you can. So, with the Moors, definitely that that um, sentiment still applies. Now, um, what really helps this tactic with the flanking and the maneuvering of the quick cav that the Moors have is the Turk Camel Spearmen, and they have the trait of scaring horses, which you know it's very easy to route them. So, what you can do is if you got like really heavy cav and you just get a flank with the you have them fighting the camels and then you flank them, those cab will probably route, even if they're w winning the fight, they'll just run away. So, and since you have such fast cab, you can just chase them down. And uh, how much do those uh, spearmen, camel spearmen cost? They cost 600 florins. They have an 
uh, a armor upgrade of 95, a weapon upgrade of 120, Chevron 144, if that really matters to a bunch of people. But yes, it, it's all about flanking with the camels. I'd also like to add that, like, if you keep, like, your Christian guard, you know, you go out to the front and, like, try to counter enemy cav. If you keep your camels in the back as rear security, even if you get flanked by, you know, European heavy cav, if you manage to charge your camels into the the cavalry that's gotten your flank, they it will reverse the whole situation where otherwise your infantry is being flanked, and so their morale will drop. But if you got camels going against the going against the European cavalry, you will find that the, their morale will drop because they're suddenly surrounded by your by infantry and camels. So, uh, a, as a defensive unit, they're, they're absolutely fantastic, and for the price, you can't ask for much better. You definitely want to like slap on a couple upgrades all the same. But overall, you know, they're, they're, they have that slight extra edge that, you know, your rear security with other European cav you don't have. Yeah, and uh, I just want to say, with using those Camel Spearmen, I've seen a lot of times units of heavily upgraded Western Cav routing in numbers of 30 or higher, and then if you just get your Fast Cav chasing down, you took out their Cav, and it's fine. And of course, then you also have the two really good Skirmish Cav that the Moors have to offer, the Grenadine Genites and Camel Gunners. So what do you say about them, Zaz? The Genites... I have to say, in my own testing, they failed pretty miserably, but I would give them the exception that, along with support with the Christian Guard and the Lancers, that they will do well, as long as you get behind an enemy. If you try and charge, you know, infantry or cap with the Jeanette, with the Grand Dune Lancers, they will falter. They, they will break instantly. However, you need to keep them on, on the flanks. You need to keep them on the outside. You need to make sure that they're always just in a harassing mode, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they they are, of course, your rich cap. They're not really best in the melee, but if you use them right with their armor-piercing javelins, it could be really damaging. But, of course, it's over always shouted by the camel gunners. They cost, what, a thousand something? <laughs> they, they cost 1180, 1180 florins, wow. and they they are the answer. They are Islam's answer, answer to the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The camel gunners. It is no wonder that guns are banned already so often in this game, but with the Camel Gunners, you have a mobile musket unit, and they reload at 13 seconds, 13, about 13 to 14 seconds from what I've timed, and every, like, if you put them on skirmish mode, like, you give them around the flanks, they will route just about anything. You don't want to give them the melee grind. You don't want it at all, but even if you they end up in the melee grind, they've already put so much musket fire on their coming opponent that it, it will decimate just about anybody, even against German riders, who overall they might have a better melee stats than so the, the camel gunners, but at the same time they, there's not much else to say the camel gunners, they just wreck almost anything. Yeah, and they do have the uh, long uh, long range missile straight, which is the, it's exclusive of all missile cav mostly only like Poppy's crossmen and other uh, really high-end archers have that trait, but also those or musketeers gunners, or musketeers in well, general. Yeah, uh, but they're the only mounted units, which is really unique to them. But uh, of course, in the interest of time, you have to move on. Of course, there's a lot you can do with camel donors. Just don't get them in a melee. Um, Not at all, never. Yeah. <laughs> and then, if you go to infantry, we have the counterpart of the Christian Guard, the dismounted Christian Guard, which is almost equivalent to the Conquistador, except it can't get armor upgrades. Of course, this will be your backbone in any fight. Very, very useful. It sets apart the Moors from any Eastern faction actually having a capable uh, heavy infantry unit. Um, what have you noticed about the uh, Dismantled Christian Guard? Beyond you know, what you said, you know, it's a pretty concise statement. Like, the Christian Guard, you know, like, generally, like, if you're European, you want feudal knights to hold your line, and they'll do well. They'll do fine. They'll do just fine. But the Christian Guard, they have the extra edge where if you send a line of your infantry to attack in the line of infantry and you're worrying about your cav or your archers or whatever, that Christian guard will always, always hold the line for as long as you want. But it's with the Christian guard, you'll have the extra edge like you would with conquistadors where it you just have that extra space of time where you don't have to worry about 
like micromanaging your infantry, you can spend the extra time the Christian guards are fighting it out with cav, with uh, crossbowmen, with anything else, and they will do just about any job you want them to do. They, they'll go against cavalry, they'll go against archers, they'll go against he other European heavy infantry. They like the only things they're and the only counter to them are Christian. Our conquistadors are Venetian heavy infantry, but we all know what those guys can do. Yeah, and of course, um, you know, you can only get four in the interest of money. They can't get armor upgrades, but oh well, they do phenomenally. Um, they, if you mix them with urban militia, which is our next infantry unit that's unique to the Moors, um, and you give the urban militia just armor and attack. Of course, urban militia will not outperform any Western heavy infantry, but they will hold long enough. Even without a morale boost, like the good morale trait, they will hold long enough at the side of the Christian Guard as long as you alternate them. Don't have an entire flank of urban militia, but have it like Christian Guard, urban militia, Christian Guard, urban militia, so on and so forth, as many as you have. Um, and urban militia are only like uh, 400, 500 florins? Four, 400. Yep, they're very cheap, and then you just get two upgrades, and they will stand up quite well alongside, and they do save quite a bit of money. That's absolutely right. Um, from toe to toe, they won't go against, like, say, Italian men at arms, for example, or broken lances. To a man, like, they're outclassed for that thing. But if you, to that extent, but if you put them in a line along with your Christian guard to guard the flanks, or if you want to, like, you know, flank another enemy, like infantry line, that they will do the job just fine and. With no problem, you have nothing to worry about. Like it's a lot better than, like, say, you know, Turkish Sophie lancers and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. And um, in the light of these two great infantry that they have, of, well, urban militia aren't great, but they they they're great for what their prices and their expected capabilities. They over, always outstand me with whatever they do. But then there's the Hashishim, which is a Eastern faction unit. Of course, it's 880, and the Hashishim can't e either get upgrades, and they have the same sets of dismounted Christian guards, so I don't really see a point in getting the Hashishim as the Moors. Uh, but personally, me, what do you say about that? It really depends, like, you know, I don't mean to knock other, like, people of, like, lesser skill or whatsoever, if, like, we could put a rank to that, but with the Hashishim, they are very specific in their roles. I, personally, if I were to deploy Hashishim, I'd put them at the very front of my infantry, like, and my archers and stuff. I'd keep them hidden. They, they can hide anywhere, no problem. And where they work best is being unexpected and just having a sudden rush against an infantry column or whatever. The Hashishim, they, they'll fight to the death and they'll do just about everything you want them to do. But the thing is that they have half the infantry units as your standard infantry units. So, for example, if they want against fuel knights, the fuel knights will always double them in number, no matter what. But that is balanced out by the fact that they have two hit points. So the only thing that's the deficit of being lesser in number is the fact that they can be easily surrounded, which could cause them drought. Of course, they're very hardy overall, but uh, you don't, the, don't want to risk them being surrounded. The, they are, but like they will be surrounded much quicker than you can expect other lines of your infantry to be so. Yeah, especially. And, of course, Hashashim still melt into cav charge to oppose to anything. Some people think they don't. I've noticed they've, like, charged them directly into cav, and they've died <laughs> terribly. Like, the two hit points does shit there, okay? Um, but uh, moving on to the last unit of infantry that is very unique to the Moors, besides the spearmen, which aren't very spectacular, so we're not really going to address them, there's the Sudanese tribesmen. They're only like, uh, we just checked, uh, 300 florins, and they have attack of 13, a little less defense, but they're, they're an early period unit, I believe, and they're very fast for infantry. They can actually run, like, faster than camels, I think. <laughs> or almost. I, w I would, um, disagree, disagree with you to the extent the, um, uh, the urban militia and all that stuff, the, 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 the Hashishim, the, they'll, fight to the bear, bear on the stuff that you just need to really play your tactics well the uh, the spearmen that's what I was going for the spearmen the Moorish spearmen I would actually say they have the best spearmen in the entire game the Italian spear militia they'll get you far enough they're a fair unit I would say they're not spectacular nor are they bad but they're a very very fair unit they're good for low money battles and if you want to fill out your Moorish army with spearmen 
as opposed to like you know just bringing for Christian guard you know you won't be sorry for it I think that the more spearmen really are, are good against uh, like all types of cab that's that's really anyway the Sudanese tribesmen the Sudanese tribesmen they'll go against any spear unit you can imagine they will they'll break any spear unit just that that's in the roster basically then they themselves they don't have great morale they don't have great stamina all that stuff but what they are is extremely cheap and extremely effective for the price that's why i would say yeah especially in early period battles because i'm they are an early period unit i'm pretty sure they and are yeah so if you're playing an early period battle and you need some mercenaries you take those sudanese tribesmen and they can really really do some damage against early period units of course but even in a game, if you have your infantry line and just one unit of Sudanese tribesmen, they will run, and they're pretty fast uh, for uh, infantry at least, since they have no armor or anything. And just run and flank, they will uh, get a good charge off, since they have 13 attack and on charge of 3. So they're like, funeral lights and attack, but they just don't have the defense to back it up. So as long as they're on the flanks, they'll just do their job of routing enemy infantry, uh, especially with the help of the Christian Guard and urban militia. Abs absolutely, absolutely. They are extremely like you know as i said before they will not disappoint you for the price you pay for them they are they will always be effective at at, at reasonable lengths like you can't expect them to charge the conquistadors for example but if you were to go against a line of conquistadors got your christian guard forming the main line against them and you get a uh, sudanese tribesmen flanking them they will rout pretty quickly the Sudanese tribes and they they will not be worried too much. Like if like the enemy gets a basic cav charge in, they will still if, if you still set up right, the Sudanese tribes and it will cause that one route that you need to finish the game. And I don't know if this is poor pure crap. Of course, um if say you have a calf fight, I've seen that Sudanese tribes and go into them. Of course I don't know if spearmen would do better since more spearmen have good stamina and good morale, some of them at least. Yeah. Uh, but the Sudanese tribesmen, for some reason, I think they have like a f quicker attack. That's just I don't know for sure, but they seem to really attack quickly. And if you get them in a cav fight, they will take cut down at least three, four cav in like a charge. So they're really useful for that, and they're quick enough to get there before the enemy uh, usually pulls out or notices, of course. So that's one of my favorite units of the uh, Moors when I get to use them. But sadly, I sort of seem to not. <laughs> But uh, go moving on to the missiles, then we have the Peasant Crossmen. Now, don't let the name deceive you. These no. are special op peasants. These peasants, uh, if you're walking through the Moorish countryside and then you want to like steal some money from the peasants, they will wreck your ass. They will shoot you with a bolt or a crossbow, and they will not be sorry. They have long-range missiles, the only peasant unit in the game to ever do that. And they have a pretty good attack and somewhat we weird stat. It's a 7-4. Which is any other peasant unit has like four at most or two for attack and like one defense. So they're actually a lot better than the average peasant. Um, so what do you say about them? Uh, this is exactly you said. Their key strength is the long range and uh, uh, combined with crossbow bolts, armor piercing crossbow bolts, they will unleash a flurry onto any like archer group that comes across them and they'll be able to do damage. They will not stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against Pavis, they will not stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against Avanturier, but with archers in general, I've found that like it's all about positioning. Like For example, if you deploy peasant crossbows on a higher level on a hill, for example, they will be able to hold out very well. They will be able to hold out the skirmish battle forever. Well, it's no guarantee if they'll win it, but they will be able to suppress down, and with their light armor and stuff, I always found them useful for like flanking. Always like setting them, setting a line up against the enemy cav. Or the, if I were to charge my infantry, I would set my crossbows on the flank and make sure like I get some bolts and stuff. They, they will do just fine. And morale wise, they're okay. Melee wise, they won't stand up. They won't stand up to most units and stuff. But they will stand up enough where like even if they route, you'll be able to collect them back and. Get them back into basic formation for yeah yeah to, yeah, yeah, yeah the the but, this uh, just to uh, disagree with you for one point I have fair seen enough them stand up to uh, Pavis and Aventurier of course the one thing I noticed with a skirmish 
is that if you have any crosswind, of course, even if you have the high-end Aventurier, they are the most expensive crosswind and they are so good. But the problem is, is that there a lot of them cost goes up because of their armor and everything. But when you have the skirmish between the two, they will lose at almost equal rates. And the skirmish is dependent on so many other factors that their little edge won't really help them in the long run. So uh, that's just what I think about the, um, the present crossbows. They're very, very versatile. Of course, then you have the other archer unit for the uh, the Moors, the Desert Archers, which is an early period unit. So what say you on them? They are at the bottom of the grid barrel. They are the very basic you need for a solid you know, missile unit, like as missile group and stuff. The Desert Archers, they're the main unit you're probably going to use for Egypt and all that stuff. They like as the difference between them and crossbows they'll be able to put the fire arrows down so if like say if you feel like having a archer a missile oriented moorish army you can have like four peasant crossbows and like a couple of desert archers in the back putting fire arrows down on the enemy infantry group and that they'll be able to route fairly quickly and that stuff so they're definitely useful for that and for sieges you know there's no doubt the archers will Fire better than the crossbows. They'll be able to get over those walls. They'll be able to put fire down a lot more accurately, a lot more competently than you would find with crossbows and all that stuff. So they're just a basic solid missile art archer unit that you can definitely use if you feel like it. With yeah, peasant, yeah. I, with I would say is that uh, mm. the desert archers are probably better for early period battles when there's not as many long missiles or good crossmen in the game, yeah. but then there's also, in sieges, since crossbows never can seem to get a good angle in sieges, they can always uh, do well, even without the armor piercing of the Scots Guard or longbows. But uh, moving on to the final missile unit that is noteworthy of the Moors is the Sudanese Javelin unit. And now, I wouldn't really recommend using them in a field battle, since Javelin men don't seem to work out in the field, because if one cav charge around, they're doomed, or sometimes they get sucked in the melee. But if you have them in a siege right behind your uh, Christian guard and they're just throwing away their javelins, they will punish enemy infantry. I've gotten a hundred plus kills with them in different sieges, uh, at least way in the past. I haven't played them in a siege in a while. Gotta get back into that. So what do you say about these Sunnis javelin men? You're absolutely right. Like um, Javelins in this game in general, they, they're they not useful beyond like working the sieges and stuff. The only other factions that can really compete with them would be like, uh, say, the Timurids, the Afghan jav Javelins, or the Spanish, the Portuguese uh, Amogolo Ribbons, or whatever they're called. Amogolovars, I think, something like that. Uh, Amogolovars, yes, whatever yes. It's, yeah, some, like, bad European name that us stupid Americans can't pronounce. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but, like, you get them behind, like, a line. With the Moors, you don't have pikemen. With the Moors, you don't have, like, you know, a solid, like, line of, like, spears to, like, deflect a general choke point. What you need is that heavy infantry. And with the javel the Sudanese javelins, they will always provide a good supplement for choke points and all that stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, one thing that should be noted about them, opposed to other javelin men, like the uh, Afghan or the one of the name that we can't pronounce from the Iberian factions is the, <laughs> is the fact that uh, they cannot stand up in a melee for long. So don't no, even try. Can't. Like, don't even waste an upgrade on them because it's not going to help you out. They, the upgrade doesn't affect the missile attacks, so if you get an attack upgrade, it really won't help, unfortunately. So uh, just use them as support. They're pretty cheap, and they could save you some money, of course. Um, but moving on to the next, because uh, this is getting a little bit lengthy. Uh, well, actually, we're out of units, so, but uh, just general cost and balance of the Moors. What, what do you think about the cost and balance, Zaz? I think that overall, the cavalry, for what it's able to do, you'll definitely be paying a penalty for for it. Like, you'll be paying an extra 80 florins to 100 florins for what you could possibly get for, from, say, Hungary, for example. Like, the, Chris, the Grenadine Lancers will always be outperformed by the Hungarian hussars or the British demi lancers and stuff like that. The the, the price to effectiveness ratio will always be there. But overall, with the Moors, you have a lot of great anti-cav capabilities. You always have a good defensive 
wall that you can build up against like you know heavy European calves. So as long as you rely on the Christian guard and you get your peasant crossbowmen in a proper position, you'll be always be able to stick it to any European like infantry you go against. You'll be always be able to get against the main body of the European army if you're able to. With the Christian guard with their maneuverability, you'll be able to like like flank any like heavy infantry line you find if you find that opening and it will be a lot easier to exploit that opening if you find it with the moors they will always find a spot open if you use their speed to the advantage speed is definitely has a lot to do with the moors and stuff but overall they have they have the best infantry of any, any islamic faction they probably have the best like crossbowmen they like they have the only crossbowmen of any islamic faction overall they will contend against any European um, arm, army sub, and if you know how to use them right, they will beat just about anything. Yeah, and uh, even with the uh, cost deficit of the Cavs, yeah. um, with the other, like the saving money with the desert, uh, different archers they have and the missile units and their infantry that can be uh, pretty cheap, I think you're definitely getting if not uh, cheap units or uh, right at the like right at a balanced uh, cost for all of those other units that really makes up for the uh, cab deficit. So I would say it's a very cost eff effective faction in comparison to uh, others like say France or Turkey, which are very uh, cost hungry. <laughs> um, we'll get into that those. they are. Yeah, that we'll get they to are. Those at those uh, faction depth when we get to them. Uh, so basically, I think it's a very cost-effective faction, but balance-wise, I think this is not a, your rush faction. This could be used as a siege faction with a little bit of skill, but I think it's what it's really good with is time. And if you do a balanced attack, you really get, get to use your crossmen, really work them out. Use your fast cav, make, take the time to maneuver, um, and really get the, the flanks and to defeat higher and better melee cav. Uh, that's what you best have. So you really have to f go with a long skirmish phase would really help out the Moors uh, as opposed to other factions that are better for rushing and etc. When it comes to rushes, they do stand a bit of a challenge, but of course your Christian Guard, they will go a long way for you. Uh, yes, they will. Dismounted. So any um, final points that you have to say about the Moors before we end our little session? You're generally right. Um, for rushes, you don't want to rely on them, but as you said, it's all about timing and patience with the Moors. Um, that's not to say that, like, if you're in the heat of the battle, like, you know, you need to make some certain adjustments. The Moors are also somewhat of a versatile faction. I wouldn't call them as versatile say, as, say, Milan, but they're definitely same, in the same category, where they're overall a fairly balanced army. They're not a cheap army, by any means, but they are a balanced army. So... But as long as you know how to use the, this army's strengths to, to your best advantage, you will always do well with them. Yeah, I think you can do a lot with the Moors. Um, of course, they can't do everything like, say, Spain can do literally everything. Literally but everything. Have, but they have their own... They're really fun to play, and they're, they're just a great faction. So um, I think that's all. I think we covered most of it. I really guys hope you enjoyed this episode. I thank you, Mighty Zaz, for joining me on this episode. Always happy to be a part of it, man. All right. So uh, thank you very much. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And we will, well, not we, but maybe he'll come back for another one if he's lucky. Um, <laughs> see you all in the next episode. Goodbye, my friends. Goodbye, guys.